The remarkable works of Canadian inventor John Hutchison has drawn widespread attention from businessmen and government scientists since 1979 when he began using ultra-high electromagnetic frequencies to transform matter in some very unusual ways. It has come to be known as the Hutchison effect. Beginning of 1980, experimenting with all the electromagnetics and uh, electrostatic equipments I had at the time, I started to notice some very, very unusual effects, such as a room being filled, filled up very quickly with multicolored lights, steel bars sitting on wood and not causing any fires, metal turning to jelly, things levitating and jumping off to the ceiling or simply go up, hover, and then fall back down. Dubbed by some as the poltergeist machine, there is no one machine, just a lot of old army surplus gear, randomly tuned by John. No one knows how it works. John has apparently figured out the right combination of radio waves and electrical energy to create the effect. If it could be proven, its impact would be huge. You'd have to rewrite most of the science textbooks. The objects you're seeing um, moving there is a form of levitation by uh, translational movement, meaning that the objects become lighter and can float around, the heaviest being the barium cylinder that you see there um, with the two wires coming out of it. it tends to slide around on seven pounds of its own weight. The physics of it is a self-resonation of what they call a ferromagnetic and piezoelectric barium type name. Uh, through a power amplifier and broad and narrow uh, bands of electrical energy going into this crystal. So the applications of this in advanced applications using free energy or zero point energy to power it would be in uh, propulsion technology. This is a crystal converter unit that I made about a year ago to see if the principle worked and indeed it seems to work to this day. Um, the principles involve the Casimir effect and uh, space charge type of barrier technology in semiconductors and um, a, a jitter activity called zero-point energy that goes through time and space. The idea is to get the material inside this to interface with the uh, jittering action of zero-point energy. And moving on to what they may look like inside, I actually bring out a piece here of this material of common minerals and that, produced in a special way. And I take a reading here. And I should be getting a higher reading. I had a hot spot somewhere on here. I have here almost a half a volt, as you can see. As one can see, there's no batteries in this or anything else except just crystalline material with different uh, configurations. And this is a steady state. It's always that and has been tested up to a year's time and under stress tests also. So, which maybe decide to then, of course, mount the same material in cylinders. Different cylinders, of course, there are different mixes in there, and I found that uh, that some of the cylinders are not as powerful as this material here, or this very tiny one here. Actually, this has more power than this large artillery shell unit here. And what I want to do, of course, is to um, <coughs> demonstrate it in the sense of it making actual power. That means to turn on a small motor. Okay, I'm attaching this to the base here. Another lead to the top, and it should spin, which it does. So you have basically this kind of material powering motors. Of course, it's a very small motor at this time, but scaled up in larger amounts of, of material and power up to uh, several horsepower if needed. Hutchison hopes his simple shake-and-bake method of producing these crystal energy converters will attract investors who can see the potential of permanent batteries which never need charging. Non-toxic that will interface with zero-point energy in space and time.
Hutchison's more dramatic experiments border on the paranormal and have generated more than just a passing interest from U.S. military research labs. We've had about 750 demonstrations of levitation, translational movements, uh, metallurgical samples falling apart, uh, changing into transmuted unknown metals. Uh, quite a variety of obscure types of effects, wood impregnated into uh, metals, other objects in metals, uh, monopole uh, magnetic fields written up in many journals. Um, quite a host or a Pandora's box of different types of effects on the outer edge of, of the scientific uh, community. In this remarkable series of video clips shot by Hutchison, we see what happens when he fine-tunes the electromagnetic frequencies aimed at target objects in his garage. On the subatomic level, I feel that there is a, a dimension shift activated by very conventional electrostatics, RF fields that I use, and Tesla waves that I use, that actually form a keyway that opens up another area of time and space that may activate the zero-point energy field and interdimensional reactions, let's say, to gravitational waves and time waves, or chronons, if you wish. Perhaps we're dealing in chronons and gravitons, which are maybe particles, and somehow causing a distortion, which causes objects to simply break apart or pulsate in the center uh, of stainless steel bars and fall apart, or to become weightless. ice cream in a plastic cup. Finally, a 70-pound cannonball. What is uh, interesting and also frustrating about his invention is that he's using a combination of Tesla coil and Van de Graaff to produce a very disruptive and lifting experiments, which in one case, for example, uh, actually lifts a 19-pound bushing uh, toward the ceiling just from electromagnetic fields. Now, when we analyze that, we find that there's a um, position versus time graph that we can plot and also the velocity versus time but when we actually analyze the um, acceleration versus time, it's uh, an increasing straight line. So we're forced as scientists to admit that we have a third derivative effect, which um, for my mind actually lends itself to a, a anomalous new force, which I call hyperforce, uh, because we have to take a derivative of that to finally get a flat straight line, a constantly increasing acceleration. 
So the Hutchinson effect has been used as a benchmark for a comparison to many other high voltage propulsion devices. Electrogravity, in other words. Frustrated by authorities and lack of recognition, John has been spending time developing his new project, batteries that last forever, based on the somewhat bizarre zero-point energy theory. Followers of this theory believe that all physical matter floats in a sea of energy, which, if collected and converted into electrical power, could more than meet all the world's demand for energy. I feel everything has a life force to it. I tend to visualize that atoms are a whole universe and when they're combining one atom to make millions if not trillions of them you have a piece of metal perhaps every time you run your hand across a piece of metal you're taking off several million atoms at a time to demonstrate how energy is everywhere John uses rocks from his neighborhood and in two hours makes a zero-point battery strong enough to power a pen light and make sure it bonds Almost one half electron volt. This is better than a conventional battery simply because it never runs down. So with these things, they could last approximately as long as minerals last, up to maybe a thousand years, unknown. Realizing his batteries could help solve the world's energy crisis, the Japanese have embraced John and funded him to build his bigger crystal-based models. I got orders from Japan and sponsorship for me to make more of them. So the money would come through into my bank account, and indeed I made units that are actually in Hiroshima City. While various zero-point energy devices were funded by the Japanese, so far none have taken off on a mass scale. John Hutchison is probably the very visual proponent of the whole kind of zero-point energy movement. Zero-point energy devices could revolutionize the planet. If you can build a zero-point energy reactor about the size of your microwave oven, put it in the back of your house somewhere, you run your house. You don't need to you run all its electricity needs. You don't need to pull anything off the national grid. Well, if you put that into the third world, you're going to revolutionize the third world. That is as much a threat to some people as it is a benefit. And as far as the Hutchison effect goes, I'm rather disturbed that the U.S. government and aerospace corporations has it. Through the concerns of it being used for an evil force by the military-industrial complex disturbs me quite a bit. I like to see it used for the helping of nature because uh, there's so much pollution going on with nature. Mankind tends to want to fight each other all the time with wars whereas Mother Nature rolls on with great energy and power. It's absolutely essential for the world, the survival of the world, that we get off petrochemicals. Uh, failure to do so, it really threatens our national survival. What I like about John is that he doesn't compromise. He doesn't compromise his appearance. He doesn't compromise his lifestyle. What he does is pretty unconventional. So, um, you know, good on him. I, I'm, I'm all for that, and uh, I wouldn't want him to change. He's fine just the way he is.